Greetings from Bloomington, Indiana, everybody. I'm sitting underneath the uh, sassafras tree in my backyard, and uh, I'm going to teach you a tune that I really, really love called the New Market Polka, a three-part Irish polka. Let me uh, play it for you first, and um, then I'm going to teach it to you piece by piece. Okay, it's really a nice little tune. There's not, it's not that complicated. Um, it's in the key of G. I like it in G. Some people do play it in D. Um, once you learn it in G, then you could bring it over to D if you felt like it. Uh, so let's get in tune. G. Mandolins are very uh, fickle, as you know. If you play the mandolin, you know that they will sometimes turn on you and not allow them to be in tune at all, like some crazy animal that will not uh, not obey you in any way at all. So I believe in singing along with the mandolin to show your humility. All right, so first part of the tune, the A part. start there. So the fifth fret of the third string or the G note. So that big open E. Let's just do that much. Let's do the response to that. Your turn. Good. I couldn't really hear you, but I know you were trying. So let's do it one more time. Very good. So um, the backup for that would be probably G C G C G G D G C G C G D G. Or you could just do uh, G G G. When the polkas uh, are played, um, they're typically played quite fast in Irish music, so you might not be able to throw in every chord you want to throw in. So that is the A part. Oh, you can.
could do it in the lower octave quite nicely as well. But let's actually let's stay with the upper octave for now uh, to review. E D B B A B. All right, that is the A part. Now let's go to the B part. You're going to start at the high G up here, a third fret of the E string. So, yeah, I like to strum a big G chord when I'm hitting that, um, that, that first note of the B part. Uh, another thing that is nice is to do a little skip uh, in the rhythm there. Right there, I really like that. And then the response. Kind of doubles back on itself, it goes up. Yeah. Very good. So now, um, oh, that's the first half of the B. This, um, uh, the second half of the B is slightly different. It goes up, there's a little variation. Yeah, it does that cool variation. Yeah, that's really cool. So let's play the entire B. All right, uh, one note on fingering. I'm the, I have the worst fingering in the world. Um, I am a total cheater whenever I can cheat with my fingering. And uh, you can finger um, the, go up to the high B, the seventh fret of the E string. You, you, the, the normal fingering would be. Uh, on the variation on the B2 would be to, to go up to your pinky, middle ring, pinky. I know, feel free to cheat along with me. I pretty much always jump my hand up and go index, bring my index to the third fret in second position for a violin player, I guess. You have no reason not to do that. It's so much easier and my pinky is terrible. I don't know if yours is terrible, but. I tend to have way more success when I don't use my pinky. <laughs> So, and B2. You see, I did that little shift there. All right, let's play the A part and the B part. There's that lead into the B part. Another lead in. Good, that is the A part, A and the B part, uh, both parts of the B. So, and now we have the C part. Oh, and the, now the chords for the B part, what would they be? Yeah, I would probably do B, C, G, C, B, C, D, G. Yeah. Okay? Third part, the C part. Um, 
You're gonna go, I'm from the G, A, B. So. And this, this is really the best part of the tune, in my opinion. Uh, and I do a little skip, little da -da -da, up when I get up to that high B. Yeah. Uh, that part is really nice. Uh, I tend to do it as slightly differently when I'm slowing it down and thinking versus when I'm actually doing it. So, uh, um, when I'm going fast and not thinking, I tend to go. But really, I think the melody goes. You're articulating that G natural, the third fret of the E string. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's do that uh, that C part again. And it always it does that little climb in on all the parts. This chord, this G chord up here is really nice. The seventh fret of the pinky, ring finger at the fifth fret of the A string. So you can go. I like that, doing that full G. I tend to cheat on my fingering though, I'll tell you. I tend to go straight from my uh, index up here at the fifth fret of the A string. That's the three parts of the tune. Dine, um, you know, you really know a tune if you can sing it. Um, oh, the chords, the chords, the chords. The chords. All right, what, what happens with the chords? Oh, G, G minor. That's really pretty. G minor, C. C, C stays on the C. C, G, C, G, D, back to G, G, E, E, E minor, C, 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 D, C, D, D, D. Do you love my singing at this point? Okay, that, that's definitely with the chords. Whole C part. And slower. That's how it goes back into the beginning of the tune.
Okay, let's talk about a few smaller things uh, about this tune. Uh, it's really nice on a mandolin to play a lot of strings and not just a few strings. The more the, more the merrier. The mandolin is such a quiet, naturally quiet instrument. So, um, I like to hit, I always like to hit double stops to any degree that I can, which is hitting two sets of strings at the same time. Always going to, for the double strings. Yeah, you you should do that too. Uh, just in general, uh, you can also get, uh, the the G string is just sitting there and it's going to be in tune with what you're doing. So you might as well hit that while you're at it. So that's important. Uh, hit as many strings as you can that, that are in tune. Another important thing. Uh, I think mandolin players should not brace their hand on the mandolin. I think uh, I have a bad past of bracing my finger on my mandolin. You can see I have a worn spot on this old mandolin. Uh, don't do that. Uh, you don't really need to. Uh, keep your uh, hand free and uh, it's better for your wrist uh, as a mandolin player, not to not to plant, as they say. Don't plant your finger if you don't have to. Uh, don't don't do what I do. I'm try I try not to. Uh, I did that a long time ago when I wore a hole in my mandolin. So uh, avoid that. Um, another important thing: hold your pick on the mandolin really lightly. Like don't don't clamp down on it. It's really a light touch. One little exercise for doing a light touch on the pick is hold it like this. So it's just balanced there, like on a like on a shelf. Somebody showed this to me years ago. It's a shelf. You're gonna go hit. So you hit it, and as soon as you hit it, bring the hand up and don't even hold on to the pick. Uh, I was at a bluegrass concert once, and a friend of mine. Uh, told me, he said, look at that mandolin player. He's li every time he lifts up his hand, his, his thumb is free of the pick. The pick's just resting on his finger. That's a really good thing to practice. Maybe you want to have a spare pick in your pocket in case it goes flying into the woods. But no, but seriously, a light hold on a pick is going to always have a better sound. Don't clamp down on it too much. Uh, Everybody holds their pick differently. I don't care what people say. There's no universality to pick holding. There just isn't. Um, find a, a way that works for you that you're not stressed out, that you're not holding too tightly. You should be able to uh, do a tremolo with a pick. And it should, you should be able to do it for hours and hours and hours and have it not hurt. Let's play all of the New Market Polka after that mandolin proselytizing. All right, New Market Polka. Dancers clapping.
I love that tune. I truly do. Okay. Uh, if you're going to play it at a country dance, I'd probably do A, A, B, C. You, you can make up your mind how you want to do it. Um, you have the chords. Oh, let's let's talk about a couple of uh, chord things. Uh, when I'm playing in G, I love this chord just the most of all. I don't know why. No, I know exactly why. It's... Um, it's my index finger at the fourth fret of the G string, and then um, middle and ring at the fifth fret of the D and A string. I like it because it's kind of chunky and woody, and it's not tinny uh, like uh, often a mandolin is inclined to be. I love the low strings on the mandolin; they sound so good. And you can um, play that G chord on those bottom three strings, and don't bother to play the first string; just leave that one alone. Seems weird, but just play that bottom string. It sounds so good. You have a lot of tonal control when you just hold down those three bottom strings. And you can go back and forth between the G chord and the D chord. It's side by side. The D7 is right there. If this is the G, then you can just switch your middle finger and your ring finger. Let's switch places, kind of. Your middle finger is going to go to the fifth fret of the G string, and your index finger is going to go to the fourth fret of the D string. And then you're going to turn into this little arrowhead here, which is a D7. Uh, again, ignore the first string. Um, that's a D7. So you can go back and forth between the G and the D7 really nicely. I love that. That's useful uh, for many different reasons, but one thing that's great is it's you can switch to different uh, keys really easily. That's the key of G. You can go to F down below. Uh, you can go F to C7. That's really nice. You can also do it in the key of A. I love that too. Of course, there's more than one uh, and five in most songs, but one and five is a great place to start if you're backing something up, especially if you don't know what you're doing, which is moi. So then you want to have a loose right wrist. You can play in pretty much any key with those two chords, one and five. So let's go back to the G and D. One and five. If you wanted to play in the key of D, you could just switch this over from the fourth, third, and second string to the first, second, and third string right here. And you could go. Let's say you had a gig and someone said, uh, the only problem is we're playing in E flat. And you're like, I don't know how to play in E flat. Well, then you remember this conversation we're having right now, and you can raise that D chord a half a step, putting you in E flat. And then you remember, you don't even need to know what chord the five chord would be in the key of E flat, but you just know how to make that shape. So you're organizer of the gig says, oh, the good news is we're, uh, all the songs have just two chords. So even though we're in E-flat, we have two chords all night long. You can go back and forth between those one and five chords. So any key on the neck, uh, you can do that. It's really useful. call that chord progression the hoser's delight because it certainly is all right so let's play the uh, new market polka one more time and this time let's play it with one finger Did I screw up? Um.
that is enough to make you really appreciate having uh, more fingers than one finger. That was a particularly hard tune to play with one finger. So let's play it again one more time. One, two, ready, go. So there you have the new market polka and a few mandolin tips. Uh, my name is Sam Bartlett, and I'm sorry I can't be in Vermont with you right now. Said I'm in Bloomington, Indiana, where it is 94 degrees outside. I'm not even sweating because I'm under this trusty uh, tree. Uh, thank you, and uh, look for my others in this series. I'm gonna I'm gonna post some other videos of other tunes. Pretty easy to learn. All right, thanks, bye.